It's the 20th of April, middle of the day. We've just come down to the estate rifle range. Um, obviously with this series, you guys all realize that uh, it's supported by different brands. And like all things, if you're a professional in an industry, you sort of you know like to use the best for various reasons, generally because it doesn't let you down. Um, so you, obviously we've got the Harkeela clothing uh, supported by Blaza rifles with the R8. Um, and you'll notice that there's no scope on here. Um, that's because from now on, the series is gonna be supported by uh, Shirovsky Optics. So we've got a, a new scope to put on the rifle. So I thought it was a good opportunity to show you guys how I put a scope on a rifle. Um, not saying it's necessarily 100% the correct way, but um, that's how I do it. So if you ever have to, it gives you an idea of how to do it. So then we'll get it zeroed in on the target and then we'll go heading out stalking later on. So we've got the Shrofsky scope here. Uh, it's a Z8i, I uh, for illuminated reticule. Um, it's a variable scope, which most scopes on the market are now. So this one goes back to 1.7 and then you can wind it up to 13.3 magnification. Um, the objective lens on the end is a, a 42, which is quite an old fashioned size now. A lot of scopes nowadays are like 50 and bigger. Um, but when I started stalking, the good old boys always had a fixed scope, um, which was about six by 42. Um, and I usually use my scopes, even though they're variables, on sort of between, well, six or eight. Um, maybe wind them up if it's a longer shot uh, or I wanna see a bit more of the animal before I shoot it. Um, so first thing we've got to do, take your scope out of the box and you need to um, look at the sky through the scope and twist the eyepiece on the end here. That's gonna focus your crosshairs inside. So what you wanna do is get to a point where the crosshairs are really blurry against a, black, a blank background and then obviously twist it forward until they become sharp for your eyes. And obviously everyone's eyes are gonna be slightly different. So once you've got it sharp, you should then be able to look down at the, the target area and you've got a nice sharp crosshair and obviously hopefully the, the targets at the end are in focus as well. So that's now ready to put on the mounts. So we're gonna take the top of these rings off, put them onto the scope and screw it all down. So these blazer mounts, you can see they're just over half a circle. So they clip onto the scope. And if you're really fussy like me, you don't want to just like push down on them because you're going to scratch the tube. So what you can do to help a little bit is get yourself a piece of paper, just set that down on top. Just try and ease it over the tube. And you usually find one bit rips off, but then you can pull the paper out and although it looks like it's marked the tube, it hasn't. So we've got those rings over the tube. Um, obviously there's no marks on it, which is good. There might be some little marks from someone else had it before me, but we'll ignore those. Um, so obviously we're just gonna put that on and just do the screws down loosely to get it secured on the rings and what we want to do is do sort of alternate screws so do front right first back left second so that you get like a when we tighten it down properly in a minute you get an even pressure on the rings so obviously we've got the rings on loosely now but we can still move the scope left and right we can move it forwards and backwards so because we've set the focus for the crosshairs already, we've got a, a distance at the back here. So now I need to look through the scope, just roughly, not worried about whether the crosshairs are level or not yet, but I just want to move the scope forwards and backwards until I feel it's in the right position for my eye. So I want a nice clear circle inside the scope. If it's too far forwards, then I you know, won't get the full picture. If it's too far back, then I'll get like a black circle around the inside or a semicircle if I'm looking at it at a different angle. So just move it forwards and backwards until I feel it's about right. 
which is about there for me. And then also because we're going to be using this not on a bench when we're shooting, but off sticks, I like to pick it up, just put it up freehand, make sure the, the scope's the right distance from my eye, or you could put it on the sticks as well. So now we've got the scope the right distance away from my eye, we need to level up the crosshairs inside. There's lots of different ways you can do it. You could try like a spirit level on the action. Um, you can get mounts that have got spirit levels in them. Um, you can try putting a plumb line out. But to be honest, the sort of shooting I do, sort of one, two, three hundred metres, it doesn't need to be precisely upright as if you were doing stuff for long range competitions and stuff. So the best way to do it on this particular gun, because it's got a shaped stock and everything at the back, is we're just going to drop the bolt out, go down behind the rifle and just with your eye, level it up across the top of the action there. So that looks pretty level now. And then obviously come in behind the rifle, try not to move the rifle and just adjust the crosshairs inside until you think they're level. The problem is that everyone tends to hold a rifle at a slight angle when they're shooting it. So just double check. And this bit, it's going to take you ages and you're going to adjust it until it drives you mad. But there comes a point where you just have to say enough's enough and that looks about level enough. So what I can do now is just check it from the front of the rifle because sometimes it's easier to look back down through the scope from the front against the, uh, the action and the stock to see if it's level. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. So what we do now is tighten down all the screws and then we can have a shot. So we got the distance from my eye correct. I'm pretty sure we've leveled up the crosshairs correctly. Um, although you can guarantee your friend will pick the rifle up and tell you that the crosshairs are wonky, but there we go. Um, so now what we've got to do is we're happy where the scope is. We're just going to tighten down the four screws on either mount and just do it you know a little bit each time sort of diagonally as you go so you get an, an even pressure as it comes down and, and uh, holds the scope down tight. The scope's all tightened down now with the rings so hopefully that's not going to move. So what we're going to do to make the zeroing a bit quicker is just bore sight it very roughly with our eyes. We've got some 18 inch uh, steel discs down there so I'll probably be able to um, look through the barrel, get that lined up with one of those big discs and then adjust the crosshairs onto the disc. So hopefully with the first shot we have, we're, uh, we're on the disc and we can see where we are. So take these two turret covers off. Get down behind the rifle. There's a big yellow disc down there. which pretty much on a 243 sort of fills the barrel. Okay, so hopefully the rifle doesn't move. Just have a quick look through the scope and it's the crosshairs are very low and very left. So we need to go, um, you'd think you'd have to go up, but you actually have to go down when you're looking at it from this point of view. So hopefully that's roughly middle of the disc. And we need to go to the right, so actually you need to move to the left. You can see we're turning it round quite a lot. Just double check from the back again that the rifle's still pointing at the disc. So hopefully, we'll have a shot in a minute, we'll be straight on the disc and that'll make it quicker to zero for the next stage. So I'm just going to aim, there's a big white disc down there, just a clear white disc. Just going aim right in the middle. And there you go, hopefully you can hear, we're straight on the disc. So that is probably three inches low and three inches right. If you look on your turrets, 
um, it will usually, well, nine times out of ten, it will tell you on all different makes of scope um, how far each click is going to move uh, the point of impact. So on most European scopes, it's one click is one centimetre now. Uh, on American scopes, it tends to be one click is a quarter of an inch. Um, so obviously being British, I operate in inches and centimetres to be really unhelpful. So I think I'm about three inches low and three inches to the right, which is roughly two centimetres to an inch. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to go left the same amount just to see what happens. And then have another shot. So we're now aiming on the big yellow disc with a white centre. It's almost spot on. I'll just confirm that with a second shot. Yeah, so it's a touch low still. So we've gone three clicks up and now aiming at, there's a white dot at 12 o'clock on the disc. Spot on. Just confirm it. Yeah, one more for luck, make it worse. And that's the scope zeroed, ready to go. So we come down to the targets here. Uh, so it was 100 metres we were shooting. This was my first shot, having bore sighted it very roughly with my eye through the barrel. So obviously aiming roughly in the middle um, and the bullets hit a little bit low and a little bit right. Uh, I think if I remember rightly, I went up uh, six clicks and left six clicks. Um, so if you look on the yellow disc, um, obviously it's okay for windage for left and right. It's sort of pretty much dead centre, but a little bit low. Uh, and I think I came up three clicks then, um, aiming at this little white dot um, at six o'clock, not 12 o'clock. Um, so three shots on that. Uh, not a fantastic group. If I made a bit more of an effort, maybe tighten up a little bit, but that's uh, confirmed that it's pretty much spot on zero and more than good enough to go and do some shooting. Hopefully this afternoon we'll find something to have a go at.